know, C.S. Lewis once said that everyone thinks forgiveness is a good idea until they have to forgive someone. And when we come back, we'll talk about unforgiveness. now is ended in the kingdom of light in the kingdom of light forever under your dominion you're the king of my life you're the king of my life you reign above it all you reign new life 
Now from the lips of the forgiven Hear an anthem arise Cause Jesus, you're alive oh, You reign above it all You reign above it all Over the universe and over every heart There is no higher name Jesus, you Make amends with that old friend you swore you'd never talk to again Cause you're missing Call up your mom on the telephone Talk a whole lot of nothing till the cows come home And listen Cross every T dot most the eyes Cause years grow wings and fly on by Time slips through your fingers just like sand And everything you thought would last forever Never last forever like you planned Don't let your now become a never And take life by the hand While you still can Get your dad to tell that same old joke Laugh between the jack and gold And hope one day you'll be half as funny Count your blessings and your stars It's in the year and who you are It's about the wealth you give And it sure ain't about the money And everything you thought Would last forever Never last forever like you don't let you now become never Take life by the hand While you still can You just imagine Anything can happen If you live every moment like the last
Everything you thought would last forever, never last forever, like you planned. Don't let your now become a never and take life by the hand while you still can. As we talked about last week, the, there, are, there are multiple problems with the um, problem with unforgiveness. We started off last week talking about uh, Peter, and you know, if you were if you joined us last week, Peter's just like all the rest of us. He was had a moment where he was trying to do right, go above and beyond, and he said, "How many times do I need to forgive someone? Seven? And Jesus said, "No, seventy times seven. And then Jesus goes into a story, a parable, and he he illustrates the importance of forgiveness um, in the lives of believers. Uh, go back and watch that episode if you can, if you missed it. Um, the, the story is uh, so clear and so plain. And uh, I'll have uh, the media team put some of these uh, scriptures up there. But, you know, ultimately it boiled down to t t two men. One was a, a debtor. Um, he uh, had a man that owed, owed him a thousand, what, is, what does it say, 10,000 bags of gold. And the man couldn't pay it. He begged for his life. And he had mercy on him. This man who was forgiven goes out, finds a man that owes him only a hundred silver coins. He had this man thrown in prison. And when... This is where we pick up this week. And when the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged. They went and told the master everything that had happened. The master called the servant in. He said, you wicked servant, I canceled this debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just like I had it on you? Good question. So in his anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owes. Hmm. This is how the Heavenly Father will treat each of us, of you, if, unless, you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. And last week, we discovered two problems. Unforgiveness, that uh, it's always going to have terms. Number two, unforgiveness is extremely hypocritical because we've been forgiven a huge debt, yet we have difficulties forgiving others. This week, there's two quick more. Number uh, Number three... Unforgiveness causes turmoil with others. Do you see what happened when uh, there were servants standing around when they heard the commotion about this man that just owed 100, uh, 100 silver coins and he uh, was being punished by a man that had been forgiven a huge debt? It really, really bothered the other servants. And I don't mean to read too much into this, but based on my study, based on the commentaries, based on some of the men that I uh, really admire that dig into the scriptures, unforgiveness ultimately can cause epic turmoil with the people around us. And let me break that down for you. And I think it's very important that you uh, look at this. Number one, uh, unforgiveness causes issues in the family. It can cause tension with our spouse, tension with our kids. And I'll be more specific in just a second. What about on the job? What, uh, what's it like to be around a person that is a, is a non-forgiver, that's a grudge holder? It's the, it's the person you always want to avoid. They're hard to be around. You're always walking on eggshells. Uh, they are, it's, it's toxic and it's exhausting and it's constantly and perpetually uh, awkward because in some of those circumstances, you may re remember what it's like to be around an angry person, a bitter person, an unforgiving person. You're always wondering if you're the next victim. You're always wondering 
what tension is going to be created by you bringing up the name of someone that they're possibly mad mad at. A sad, sad um, problem that goes around the turmoil that an unforgiving person causes is the um, absolute lack of reach. Here at Crossbrand, we use the term M28 because life bucks. It is very hard to be a person that other people will seek um, questions. You know, they'll, they'll seek answers. They, they'll they'll come to you with Jesus um, uh, uh, questions be, be, because you you are so not approachable if you're an unforgiving person. It causes t- turmoil in the family, in your job, in your circle of friends. But not only that, what's really, really sad, which may be the greater application here of this particular scripture, is it, it, it affects the body of Christ, the local body of Christ, the local church. We call that local body cross brand. I don't know where you may call your local body home. Um, it affects the church uh, ho- horribly. You know, I, I was reading the other day of one church that had eight splits off of it. And I guarantee you that splits that took place, those new church starts, that, that those eight church starts that started, they weren't started out of a gospel uh, craving. They weren't started out of love for one another. They were started because somebody wouldn't forgive. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. Pretty good snapshot of what an unforgiving person is really like because I, I, I don't want to play with the scripture, but I do want to show you something. If you look in 32, Paul says, be kind and compassionate to one another, right? Forgiving one another. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Here's the snapshot of what a unforgiving person uh, that's that's uh, it's been like a wildfire in, in maybe your church, but here's what it does to the local body. We'll go back to the verse prior to that. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling. Sounds like slander, along with every form of malice. In other words, every intention to to do evil. That's what it looks like when you have a a local body of Christ where somebody on some committee, some deacon, some elder, some team leader, mad at somebody else. If it's not taken care of, which I'll address in later talks on on how to, you know, go through the process of forgiving one another. But if that's not taken care of, that's exactly the kind of turmoil that unforgiveness causes when in Jesus' story, he himself pointed out with great specificity, unforgiveness causes turmoil around, uh, among other people, especially the church. There's another thing, and I've, I've really had to pay attention to what I say here because I don't want you to think I'm some weirdo. Uh, and think that, uh, well, let me just say this to you. Ready? So did you notice in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured. Well, that's not a very nice word for, you know, supposed to be that comforting Jesus. Well, let me tell you, unforgiveness, the fourth thing unforgiveness does is it causes torture. Now, I'm going to say torture, right? Uh, it, it's more specifically self-torture, I would think. And it really comes to me on, uh, on two levels. On two levels. I've seen it in my own life. I've literally watched people decay, aka be tortured themselves because they are living in a constant state of rage and anger and bitterness, all because it started with a wound, a wound that wasn't taken care of. In our world, we call that unforgiveness. There's two levels of torture, and I think one of them uh, is the torture on a a very personal level. Now, here's what I had to do. I had to look to science. I had to look to some health professionals. But without citing you all my sources, I just make three simple observations. Number one, um, undoubtedly, there's there's, uh, physical um, consequences, physical torture that goes along with unforgiveness. Did you know 
Study after study has shown us that uh, it creates a chemical imbalance, uh, that resentment, that angerness, bitterness causes an imbalance in the hormones, and, and it completely thwarts what God's got set up for us physically. Secondly, uh, it weakens our immune system. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Um, it, it, uh, what about on a mental and, a, and uh, emotional level? Depression. These don't sound like anything that I want to be a part of. Uh, increases stress. And it's uh, one of the things that I found very interesting is it has a detrimental emotional um, um, uh, response. In other words, your focus. Have you noticed how when you're angry about something, you seem to focus on that? And I was told a long time ago as a very young man in student ministry that oftentimes the very thing or person that we focus on, the wound often becomes a God to us. And in reality, we could even start behaving like what has wounded us. I, 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 I know you understand the physical and emotional consequences, but have you ever thought, um, and I don't really have a good term for it, so I'm just going to call them future consequences. H have you ever thought about what unforgiveness may make you become as a man, as a husband, um, that's one of the scary things about it because every time I look in Scripture where there's anger and unforgiveness, every time I look to your stories, when I think about my story as it relates to the problem of not being able to forgive people, I really don't want to be that prideful, angry, resentful, bitter, vengeful, hostile, judgmental, lonely. You want me to go on? I can jump on down, but ultimately, spiritually, bankrupt. I've heard this, but I haven't ever heard it put quite like this. I've heard that um, holding on to unforgiveness is like continually drinking rat poison, hoping the rat will die. Torture on a personal level, but also torture on a spiritual level. So... Scripture tells us Jesus said in, in anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay it back. This is how the Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from where, from your heart. The torturous aspect of unforgiveness is that it absolutely messes up our relationship with our Father. Um, and he does not unbecome your Father. But I do believe it disrupts the relationship. I believe that your prayers, my prayers, will be ineffective, uh, ineffective. I believe that scripture reading, that we're not going to be able to hear God's voice is easy. Because, think about it. As a follower of Jesus, we have the Spirit of Christ in us. And what better sums up our walk with Jesus and what Jesus did for us than the very act of forgiving. It is completely not what the Father wants us to do. When we live in unforgiveness, we probably are acting farther, um, uh, the farthest thing from a, from a follower of Jesus as we possibly could get. As a matter of fact, John MacArthur says this as I close, the greatest measuring rod of love in the life of a Christian Maybe that of forgiveness. So as I close today, listen, there's an online host. If you've got questions about maybe how you've been wounded or maybe you've got questions about uh, beginning a relationship with Jesus, reach out to us. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.